Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thanks for joining us. I've got a couple of housekeeping announcements before we get started. For everyone in the audience, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at that same website. You signed up for this one, strivescan.com slash Texas. And this presentation is being recorded, so uh, and it will be available in about a week at strivescan.com slash Texas, uh, so you'll be able to find that there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to our college. And our first college here is going to be Garden City Community College. Then we'll hear from Kansas State, the University of Kansas, the University of Cincinnati, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and then Wichita State. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Samantha and Kelsey from Garden State. Thank you. Let me go ahead and just screen share really quick. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Samantha Garcia, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about, oops, start my video. Okay. So my name is Samantha Garcia, like I said, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about our institution, Garden City Community College, and how to become a part of Buster Nation. Hey, Samantha, just real quick, I just want to let you know your video is still just showing black. Oh, no. Okay, here, I can try to, let me go back. But now I'm still saying black, but that's all right. If it's not working, yeah, you can I'll just see again. We can see your screen. So I'd say just go ahead and continue at this point. Okay. So like I said, my name is Samantha Garcia. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at GCCC. We also have Kelsey Bradford here and she's our campus tour coordinator. So she can help answer any questions that you guys might have in the Q&A. Sydney Sassaman, is, Sydney Sassaman is our Director of Admissions and she is also our International Student Advisor. So this is what I'm gonna go over in our presentation. So like I said, feel free to send us any Q and A's throughout if you do have any questions um, and hopefully we have enough time to get that taken care of. Here are just some fun facts about our institution. Garden City, Kansas has a population of about 26,000. Um, we have about 2,600 students currently enrolled at our institution. Our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. We have 48 different programs and majors for you to choose from. And we award about $1.5 million in scholarships every year. So here you can see what steps you need to complete to be ready for enrollment in the spring, summer, or fall. Seniors, we are an open admission college, so once you apply, you are accepted. You can also see our tuition and fees here. So we do offer border state tuition for students from Colorado, Missouri, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Below you can see an estimated cost of attendance for an entire year at GCCC. So you see tuition and fees, housing and meals. Our e-textbooks are already included in our tuition and fees. So that's why you see zero there. And then you can also see your annual total at the bottom. So at GCCC, we have a lot of different scholarship opportunities. Like I said, we award about $1.5 million in scholarships every year. So we have our academic scholarships, our 2021 scholarship application is open. It has been open since September, so you can go ahead and fill that out online. You can see how much you can qualify for based on your GPA, and you can see that right there. Um, we also have work-study opportunities for students. Um, this is for all students, and you can work for $9 an hour, up to 15 hours a week, and you can earn about $4,700 a year. You can also get involved in athletics and activities to get scholarships to help pay for your tuition and fees as well. At GCCC, we offer traditional academic programs and technical programs. So students can receive their associate's degree and transfer to a four-year institution, or they can receive a certificate through one of our technical programs and go straight into the workforce. 
We also offer dual credit classes. So any of you that are juniors can take dual credit classes through us online. Um, if you are interested, we do have a QR code there that you can scan or you can contact our outreach coordinator. Those students who are wanting to go to GCCC but aren't planning on coming to campus just yet, we also have online classes that you can take with us that are $150 a credit hour. We do have scholarships available for students who are interested in our athletic programs. You can see a list right here. I will mention that we do have eSports, which is pretty awesome. Um, so students do get a scholarship and they are an NJCAA sport. So any students who are interested in athletics, we highly recommend that you guys come and take a campus visit. You'll get to talk to coaches. And then over here, you see student organizations and clubs. So you can also meet with student organizations and clubs on your campus visits. Um, and the ones with asterisks here are the ones that actually give out scholarships if you participate in these activities. Here on the next slide, it talks about residential life. So housing is available to all students. Freshmen are not required to live on campus. So you can see the prices that we have here. And this is for the entire year. And it also includes the meal plan. So if you are interested in GCCC, we do have on-campus in-person visits. You can schedule your visit Monday through Friday, or if you wanna schedule a virtual tour, you can do that as well. You'll get to meet with us in admissions. You'll get to meet with financial aid, any academic programs that you're interested in, student activities and athletics as well. So if you are interested, you can contact us at admission at gcccks.edu, or you can send Kelsey a Q&A and she can get into contact with you. One last thing I want to mention is that we are having our tech days from March 22nd through the 31st. Any seniors that visit during those times will be in the scholarship drawing to get a $500 scholarship, but you do have to visit with the tech program to get that scholarship. If anyone has any questions, you can scan the QR code here and fill out an information request and we'll reach out to you and give you more information about our college. If not, our contact information is right there below, or like I said, we'll be on the Q&A to help answer any questions. Thanks and have a great night. Awesome, thank you, Samantha. All right, next up, we're gonna hear from Kansas State University. Take it away. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my contact information there in the chat, and then I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. There and then. All right, perfect. So hi everyone, my name is Mia Taylor and I'm the admissions representative for Kansas State University, regionally based in Houston, Texas. If you do not know about K-State, um, we are the Wildcats and we are located in Manhattan, Kansas. Sorry, not Manhattan, New York, if that's what you had in mind, but we still have a lot of great qualities. If you're looking for um, that large uh, college atmosphere, but also that small, small knit community as well, K-State is definitely for you. Here in the city of Manhattan, we are also known as the Little Apple. Um, we do have a Manhattan Regional Airport. So for those of you who want to fly in, we do have that. Um, it's a one hour direct flight connect to Houston and then about a two hour drive from Kansas City. We also, and it's also an 11 hour drive from Houston too, if you wanna go ahead and make that drive. We have a town population of about 56,000. So I like to say that's similar to the size of Spring, Texas. We also have over 20 museum and outdoor attractions, over 20 dining options, um, and over 10 plus uh, festivals and traditions and so much more. There at the bottom, you will see Aggieville. That's a town located across from K-State um, that a lot of our students go for entertainment, um, for local shops and local restaurants as well. Moving on to some fast facts about K-State. So we do have a student population of about 22,000. Um, so that works in favor with that 18 to one student to faculty ratio. We really encourage our students to build those uh, personal relationships with our faculty and staff because they would love to do that with them as well. Um, also with our resources, uh, we do make sure that our students are taken care of here on campus. With us being ranked as the number one uh, from for the 2021 Princeton Review as the happiest students, I can definitely attest to that as a recent graduate. Um, as I mentioned before, if you're looking for that community, um, that close-knit community, uh, we do work well with the community and the community works well with us, which is why we were ranked in the top five for, those, for the best town school relationship as well. 
And we like to take care of our students when they leave K-State. So with that 97 graduation placement rate, that means most of our students are either employed or enrolled in graduate programs um, or professional school within six months of graduation. And if you're interested in sports, we do have 16 Division I sports here um, in the Big 12. Moving on to academics. So we do have nine academic colleges here and those are listed right over here. Um, the Technology and Aviation, our Polytechnic campus is located in Salina, Kansas. And we also have a College of Veterinary Med. With over 250 uh, majors and programs and over 50 minors, we definitely have something for you. But say you're coming to K-State or um, you're not sure what you wanna major in, not a problem. We do have an open option program um, where you are assigned an academic advisor who works with you to help guide you into um, a program that works best for you. Moving on to life as a wildcat. So student success, we do have like a K-State first program where um, our cat communities are located um, with smaller classes and just uh, helping with that transition from high school to college. We also have free academic tutoring as well and so many other uh, student success programs. Uh, with undergraduate research, we are nationally known as a public research institution. So we do, um, encourage our students to get involved in research as soon as they can. And we have many programs on campus for them as well. Um, research not only looks good on your application when you're applying to graduate school or professional school or a job, but also helps you learn beyond the classroom. And with us here at K-State, we like to encourage that hands-on learning here. And if you wanna be involved in something else as well, we also have over 500 clubs and organizations. Um, that ranges from Harry Potter Club to Skydiving Club, to clubs related to your major, say if you're pre-health, we have a ton of those as well. Now moving on to requirements. So we are test optional for admissions. That means you can be admitted to the university based off of your test score or GPA. Over here on the left is a 3.25 high school GPA or a 21 or above composite ACT or a 1060 or above SAT. Now right here says our priority date is December 1st, but we actually moved that to March 15th. So you still have some time there. So test scores are not needed for admission, but they are needed for scholarships. So please keep that in mind. And we do super score for both admissions and scholarships. And these are some examples of the scholarships that we have. So the general university scholarships was extended to March 15th as well. Um, and those are the ones that you automatically apply for when you apply to K-State, as long as you have your GPA and test score on file. Then we have the K-State Scholarship Network. Those are more departmental scholarships where you'll create a profile and um, it will open you up to all the other scholarships located um, at K-State. And we also have the FAFSA, and this is just an estimated um, out-of-state tuition cost here, about 37,000. Um, and that estimate includes tuition fees, room and board. So as I come to a close here on the presentation, remember to remember these three words, visit, connect, and apply. So visit, come see us um, firsthand through our virtual visits and on campus and connect, connect with me as your mission representative. I am your main contact to the university and I'd love to get to know you and speak with you and share all the wonderful opportunities K-State has to offer. And last, apply. We would love to have you be a part of the K-State family and join us as a Wildcat here. So thank you again for letting me present today and go cats. Awesome, thank you, Mia. Thank you. Next up, we have the University of Kansas. Take it away, Megan, thank you. Let me share my screen here. Okay, thank you all for joining me today. I am Megan Crockett-Kuntz. I am the KU rep for the entire state of Texas. So no matter where you're coming from, I will be your point of contact in the state of Texas. Here's a beautiful photo of our Campanile, which is a famous memorial on campus that you actually walk through on graduation day. Um, I will give you a heads up if you are fortunate enough to come visit us. Um, do not walk through the Campanile. It's sort of like folklore and suspected to be bad luck if you walk through it before graduation day. So beware and stay away from the Campanile until graduation day. This is a little snapshot of what KU looks like based on the numbers. We have about 19,000 undergraduate students in Lawrence, which really makes us a medium-sized university. Um, we really feel like that is the sweet spot for us and that's where we really like to fall within. Um, we feel like it gives us sort of the community feel that students are looking for. Um, 
the true college experience, but at the same time, we're very fortunate to have all the big amenities um, of the larger universities. Obviously, NCAA Division I sports, we're obviously in the Big 12, um, and things like fraternity life and sorority life, um, and obviously lots of offerings for our students when it comes to disciplines and majors. The average ACT of students coming into to KU is about a 25, um, and the average GPA is a 3.64. Um, one thing that always shocks students is that 41% of our student population are from out of state. So we love that at KU because it really truly is sort of a melting pot um, of students from not only the United States, but from all over the world. We have over 50 different countries represented on campus. Um, so it doesn't feel like, you know, Kansas City 2.0, um, there are students from every state and specifically many of them from Texas, which is why I live in Texas and work for KU. Um, as far as Texas Jayhawks are concerned, we do have over 400 current KU students from the state of Texas. And our alumni chapters in Texas are some of the loudest and proudest. We actually have chapters in both Dallas and Fort Worth, um, as well as Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. 24% of our student body is are considered students of color and we are continuing to work on that number as we obviously know what a difference that makes on campus um, for making us more culturally aware um, and know the importance of diversity. If you haven't been to Lawrence, Kansas, um, or if you know a Jayhawk, you know that we are obnoxiously passionate about Lawrence, Kansas. Um, it is always ranked on many different lists as a top 10 college town. It does have a population of about 90,000. So it's not a super tiny town, um, but there's lots of options. I mean, obviously we have the Target and we have you know all the things that you need in town, lots of fun restaurants. Um, there's the famous Massachusetts Street, um, which is always ranked as one of the most scenic main streets in America. The really great thing about Lawrence and one of the big draws for me coming as an out-of-state student was the location between Kansas City and Topeka. It really affords our students lots of opportunities when it comes to internships and even postgraduate job opportunities. We're very, very lucky in that regard. Um, Lawrence also has lots of fun things to do when it comes to outdoor activities. Um, there's Clinton Lake, which is always a fun place to go hang out and kayak um, or just bring friends to have a barbecue or camp out. And we are also known as a live music destination. So there's always fun concerts coming to town. Um, people that you would never guess come to Lawrence. So it's, it's a really fun place to live and spend your four years. We do have over 400 different fields of study at KU, which we are very proud of because it really affords our students so many different opportunities. Um, oops, just slipped. Um, and whether you want to have a major or a double major or a minor, there are so many opportunities um, with all of our different departments and schools. This is just a little snapshot of dates and deadlines. Um, if you're a junior right now, you can apply to become a Jayhawk starting July 1st. Um, the next big deadline is October 7th, which is when our housing application opens. I always bring this up because the way our system works, the, the earlier you apply for housing and pay your housing deposit, the further you are at the front of the line. So your options will be better, although we do have incredible housing options. Um, they've come a long way since I was there a million years ago. So you'll be well taken care of in that regard. Our early action deadline is November 1st. Um, that basically means you get on a different list and you get some extra swag and you also get to register um, for orientation a little bit earlier. December 1 is sort of the big sticking point at KU, that is our scholarship deadline and priority notification deadline. If you're gonna be a Jayhawk, it's definitely recommended to apply before December 1st. Our application for admission also acts as your application for scholarship. So we make it super easy. Um, I really never hear people complain about how difficult the application is. It's very straightforward. Um, we try to make it as streamlined as possible. If you wanna scan this QR code, this is to our Be A Jayhawk Instagram page. This is where we're always giving new content for potential students and we do a lot of giveaways and a lot of really fun content on what it's like to be a Jayhawk if you're considering KU for the next four years. Um, so definitely check that out.
We are also doing live visits, on-campus visits right now. So if you're interested in coming to KU, definitely reach out to me and I can help you set up a visit. Um, we're also doing, many departments are having virtual tours. We also have info sessions and webinars for a lot of different schools um, and good overviews of KU in general. So please don't hesitate to reach out. I will put my information in the chat box, um, but I'm always here to help whenever you need anything. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Megan. Next up, we have the University of Cincinnati. Hey, good evening, everyone. And just do my screen sharing. All right, yeah, so um, my name is Cameron Newton. I'm with the University of Cincinnati. Um, I'm actually one of our, another one of our DG, uh, Dallas regional. So I do live and work in Dallas, Texas, and I serve um, for students all over the state of Texas. Um, too. So I'm really excited that you're here with us. And so just to give a brief, brief overview of UC, we are in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we are a large urban research university. So we are a big campus. As you see there, it's a really nice campus. We are considered one of the most beautiful campuses uh, in the world by Forbes. Um, and so it's a really cool place to be. Um, as far as our side, like I said, we're about 28,000 students undergrad at the main campus and then about 40, just under uh, 47,000 total students across the university. So we do have a total of 13 academic colleges, both undergrad and graduate, and then we have two regional campuses, which is kind of like a community college, um, but they're actually run by the general university. So it's a, a more open access opportunity for students to transfer into the main campus. So we have really a lot of different pathways available here at UC. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that defines us is going to be our experience-based learning. We're all about that. Um, we were actually the first school in the world back in 1906 to invent cooperative education. Um, basically, for us, that means that you're going to uh, have part of your time uh, in, your, uh, in your program working. So you'll be in class for one semester, then actually the next semester you'll be completely out of class, working full-time, earning a salary, and a um, company relevant to your major. So you'll see there um, on our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, um, our College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning and Information Technology, all are mandatory co-ops for all five-year degree programs. But in exchange, you're getting about a year and a half of full-time professional work before you've ever walked the stage for graduation. And then of course we have optional programs too in our, in our College of Business, Nursing, Medicine, um, our Communications and PR programs. And then we're actually looking at ways to expand that um, every single year. So now more and more majors are able to take advantage of cooperative education or other experience-based learning opportunities. And so as a student, um, when you're in that co-op, you're earning on average just over $10,000 per semester. And those co-ops can be done really anywhere in Cincinnati, na uh, nationwide, or internationally. So if you want to get paid as an architect to work in Denmark um, for a semester um, and be out of class is something that some of our students take advantage of in our design college, something that we're very proud of. We're actually one of the top five universities in the country for co-ops and internships. So it's all about that experience. And you'll see 100% of our students actually do participate in some sort of experience-based learning opportunity throughout the campus. So again, we're really, really passionate about that, no matter if you're in history or if you're in engineering, nursing, or anything in between. Um, and you see um, our class sizes were about 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, so while we are a large university, um, we do try to keep our classes quite a bit uh, smaller. Um, over 80% of our classes are going to be fewer than 50 people. So you're not going to necessarily always be in a, in a large environment in that respect. Um, 21% first generation, 21% 20, out of state and about 15% multicultural, not including international uh, or international students. So very diverse campus, over 300 programs, really a lot of things to do. Um, it's really hard not to talk about the city of Cincinnati to go along with the campus itself. Um, we are an urban university, like I mentioned, we're about a mile and a half from the downtown center within Cincinnati. Um, and so you combine there being such a big presence of companies, over 400 Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered in Cincinnati, not to mention all the startups and things like that, a relatively low cost of living, um, and a mid-size, about 2 million people in the metro area. So there's tons of things to do. It's a great location for young professionals when you graduate. Um, but also, of course, if you want to go beyond that and go come back to Texas or go other parts of the country or the world, you're also very well prepared for that, too. Um, so lots of things to do, professional sports, arts and cultures, um, 
performance venues, festivals, it's really happening in Cincinnati. And that, speaking of performances, you have a very strong college conservatory of music. Typically, of course, in a normal year, we're doing about a thousand performances a year in our conservatory. Um, so that's another thing that our students that we're really well known for um, globally um, for the performance arts. So just to kind of go over the admissions process, we are on the Common App. December the 1st is going to be our early action deadline. Um, for uh, our scholarships, our competitive majors, and then also the university honors program. There's no separate scholarship uh, application, so it's all going to be based off the Common App, and same with the honors uh, application, that's based off of your uh, Common App also. We are test optional for this upcoming fall and fall of 2022. Um, I don't have any sort of updates beyond that, but at least for next year, we'll also be test optional for most programs. There are some exceptions, uh, the direct entry nursing program, um, early childhood education, um, they do require a test score, and then honors consideration does require a test score too. We of course have out-of-state scholarships. We have our traditional merit programs called Cincinnatus, um, and so we do evaluate you for that automatically. Then you'll see the competitive programs, and then you'll also see our tuition. So it's a relatively affordable university, even if you're coming from out-of-state, especially when you talk about the co-op opportunities. Um, you can really help uh, not only get that experience, but also build a resume for your future. So um, yeah, if you have any further questions, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Awesome, thank you, Cameron. Next up, we have the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Take it away. Share my screen. There we go. Well, hi everyone. My name is Genesis Garcia. I'm an assistant director for the University of Nebraska Lincoln. I'm also based here in Texas. I was raised here in Texas and also went to the University of Nebraska. So very excited to share some information with you all. Uh, there's some exciting things happening here at the university. And while can I guarantee that attaining school here will result in you being the next billionaire like Warren Buffett? Um, I can tell you the university will take your talents and skills and guide you to your um, academic and career uh, success. Um, the University of Nebraska is a Lane Grant flagship um, university located in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, the city is interconnected with all three of our campuses, uh, City East Innovation. Um, particularly our campus is connected with our, our campus downtown. Uh, so it's super easy to go from the library to Chipotle, to a movie theater, art gallery, or a local music um, avenue. Um, all without having to drive. Um, as we are part of the Big Ten Academic Alliance, um, students will have um, opportunities to participate in research, study abroad, explore academic majors, uh, academic majors, which we do offer uh, more than 150 programs, um, and also take advantage of our student success and transition programs. Uh, Nebraska is considered to be a medium-sized university, um, so we do have about 26,000 students on campus, um, but the student to faculty ratio is kind of similar to that of a small institution, which is 17 to one. Um, one of our goals is that every single scholar has academic research, internship and civic engagement or study abroad in their portfolio. Uh, you'll find that one of the most notable resources on campus is the outstanding group of faculty and staff. Um, you're going to have professors on, on these campuses who are leading experts in their fields. Um, you'll get the opportunity to learn and study with them. Um, an example of collaborating with a professor is through our, uh, is through our undergraduate creative um, activities and research experience known as UCARE. Uh, through UCARE, you can um, get paid to work one-on-one -on -one with a professor on a research project that you design. Um, you can participate in UCARE with any major from art to science uh, to history or engineering. Uh, perhaps you collaborate with Dr. Susan Swearer. Uh, she is a psychology professor who leads a research board that advises Lady Gaga's uh, Born This Way Foundation on its youth empowerment and tolerance programs. Um, with over 500 clubs and organizations for you to explore it, it's easy to find fun and new experiences and opportunities. Um, we want you to get involved, have fun and get connected, but we also want it to mean something. Uh, Nebraska has the Husker Student Power Framework, which helps you as a student thrive on campus and get connected. Uh, for us, Husker Power isn't just something we chant in the stadium, but it means helping you find purpose, develop ownership, have a positive well-being, be engaged on campus and having healthy relationships. Um, a partnership and program I want to highlight is the QIT Scholars Program. 
Uh, Kiwit Corporation is like one of the largest engineering firms um, in the country. So they're actually headquarters in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, but with the Kiwit Scholars Program or with uh, the Kiwit Corporation, they actually committed $20 million, $20 million uh, to the expansion of the College of Engineering in 2019. Um, Kiwit is making another significant investment toward the college efforts to educate the next generation of engineering, construction, and computing industry leaders. Um, so the Kiwit Scholars Program is a full tuition scholarship combined with the rigorous leadership uh, program. Students would gain the skills and knowledge they need to become world-class engineers and leaders. Uh, students selected for this program will experience exclusive um, courses focused on leadership development, um, special group activities, um, unique travel experience or unique travel opportunities, um, exposure to the industry, and have that mentorship from professional leaders. Some of the ways students will engage with the complete engineering experience include a community-based um, service learning project, involvement in organizations on campus, um, with, pro with progressing leadership roles, and a senior capstone uh, presentation. When it comes to our admission process, it is unique as we have a fast turnaround process. Our application opens August 1st in your, of your senior year, which you may apply through our institutional app or through the Common App. You will self-report your academic coursework. Um, therefore, it's not required for you to submit any transcripts to us. You are guaranteed admission if you meet the core course requirements and at least one performance requirement. We are test optional for both admissions and scholarship opportunities, so test scores are not required. Initially, when a student applies to the university, um, they will be notified within a week of their, of their admission decision and then be notified in two weeks of any merit-based scholarship awards. Um, we are open for in-person uh, campus visits, uh, so definitely encourage students to um, check out our website for um, visit opportunities. Uh, we do offer Husker Redo visits throughout the week, Monday through Friday, and then we're also offering um, virtual visits as well. And then if you want to connect with your admissions counselor, um, we are scheduling one-on-one um, -on -one Zoom appointments as well. But if you'd like to learn more about, about Nebraska, feel free to take a picture of this QR code to sign up for more information. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Genesis. Um, just a quick announcement to everyone in the audience. Be sure you could ask your questions, type your questions at any point to any of our presenters through the Q&A, um, and they are available to answer. I'm going to next turn it over to Wichita State University. Take it away. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chandra Crawley, and I represent Wichita State University. Um, it is my great pleasure to be here with you tonight. I am also a regional representative, so I live here in the Dallas area, like many of my colleagues here. But um, I will kind of jump right in. Um, we are an urban research university in the state of Kansas. So we are located in Wichita, Kansas. We are the largest city in the state with a metro population of about 500,000 people. So it's a very um, nice sized city. You get um, a ton of amenities that go around with that. Um, arts, shopping, dining, city life. Um, it's really awesome. Um, and then we, as you can see, have um, a very diverse campus. So we are proud to um, have 39% of our students coming from diverse backgrounds. Um, about 44% of our students are first generation as well. So that's something um, we really enjoy about our campus is just being able to celebrate diversity and all of that good stuff. Um, you can see a lot of other fun facts here on this page. Um, we have over 350 student event or campus events um, each year. One of my favorites is hump day camel ride. So on a random Wednesday, you could see uh, a camel on campus and get to ride that for free just because we like to have fun and offer you different experiences. Um, you can see we have just over 16,000 students total. So that includes graduate students with about 12,000 undergraduate. So we're a nice mid-sized university um, like some of the others here. And um, I was a student at Wichita State and I felt like that really afforded me the opportunity to get to know professors, um, get help when I needed help as well. So that was really great. Um, you see the word free down there. You do, as a student, get a free YMCA membership um, to our, not only our YMCA on campus, that's brand new, about a year old, but also all the other Wichita uh, uh, YMCAs in the city. Um, we are NCAA Division I in the American Athletic Conference. You can see we have an Army ROTC program 
four varsity esports teams, and then um, we have a marching band for our basketball team. So that's kind of unique, but fun. We like to keep it innovative at Wichita State. Um, one other thing I want to make sure and mention in the top right there, you see that all Texas residents pay reduced tuition at Wichita State. So every Texan um, gets a tuition discount. Um, some pay our Shocker Select price, which is going to be a 33% discount. Um, and that's for anyone who's more in uh, rural Texas outside of the large metro areas. And then we have a number of counties that receive our in-state tuition at Wichita State. So um, Dallas, Fort Worth area, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, kind of the broader areas there. So there are plenty of counties um, that qualify for that Shocker City price as well, kind of, you know, in addition to that Shocker Select price. So that's a really unique thing. What's great about those is that you just have to be admitted to Wichita State to receive those. So there's nothing special you have to do, no forms. Um, it's just gonna be based off of Texas residency and then also potentially your um, county of residency if we're looking at those, the deeper discount of in-state tuition. Um, with that, you can earn scholarships. So we start with our Freshman Merit Scholarship. Um, this is going to be an automatic scholarship if you meet the GPA requirement and the test score requirement as well. So um, if you are admitted, we're going to go and look for a 3.25 unweighted GPA and then also a 22 ACT or an 1100 SAT. And that's going to earn you the kind of the baseline merit scholarship. If you have a higher combination, you can obviously earn more. Um, but that's just kind of the beginning. Um, the, the big thing with our scholarships are the early deadlines. So um, the Freshman Merit Scholarship has a November 1st deadline that you don't want to miss for sure. Um, and then we also have some large scholarship competitions. So our largest is called the Distinguished Scholarship Invitational. That um, is where three students earn $64,000 uh, if they're the winners. Other finalists get nice packages too, but that's really based off of academics and leadership. So anything you're doing to build that resume, keep that up. Um, and you can check out all of our scholarships at wichita.edu slash scholarships there. Um, if you're kind of wondering what it takes to get admitted um, with the pandemic and um, kind of we were headed test optional anyhow for the future. So you can see here um, we are just looking for a 2.25 unweighted GPA or a 21 ACT or 1080 SAT for automatic admission. It's a very simple process. We're on the Common App or um, at our own website there. There is a $40 application fee, um, but then we just ask that you self-report your GPA and test scores. Um, we won't need an official transcript until after graduation. So we can keep that simple. Whoops. Um, majors, I definitely want to touch on those. So you can see I have um, over 70 majors that we offer at Wichita State. You can see a number of the more popular ones here. So really anything engineering or business is going to be um, an awesome choice at Wichita State. We're well connected within the community with applied learning. Um, we like to start those opportunities as early as your sophomore year of college just to get you um, within your field out in the community working, making money, um, building that resume and getting experience. Um, you also see fine arts and media arts. So we have anything that we do well from musical theater to the media arts, which encompass animation, audio production, filmmaking and game design, um, criminal justice, forensic science, being a teacher, um, nursing are all very strong programs. This says we have speech pathology. We do have an awesome PT or PA program and then dental hygiene, social work, sport management to kind of round out the other popular majors. And then I also like to mention here that we have an honors college that you could actually kind of design your own major um, within that honors college. So that's a really unique thing. Um, but a lot the students who do that uh, really get a lot out of it. Um, and then I also want to mention our innovation campus. So this has been huge. This is where that YMCA is located. Our Two newest dorms are located over there as well, the flats and the suites. Um, and then our oldest dorm is actually Shocker Hall, and that's on our main part of our campus, but it's only seven years old. So really nice and new housing. Definitely check that out if you get the opportunity. Um, but we have academic buildings here. The John Bardot Center is for engineering. Um, Woolsey Hall the, is for our College of Business. That will open up next year. And then we have a law enforcement training center. You can see we have a brand new hotel, some shops, um, restaurants, all kinds of good stuff that we're doing on our innovation campus. And then the last part of that is our current partners with businesses. So like Airbus, they're an airplane manufacturing company. They were the first one to open their full-time company on our campus. They take in not only aerospace, but mechanical, electrical, engineering students, business students. My favorite is that they take in, um, they've, uh, contracted with one of our animation students uh, to design a seat for a new airplane they were designing. So some really great opportunities, not only on campus, but with all the connections that we have in the city of Wichita and beyond. Um, travel 
opportunities with Study Abroad National Student Exchange Program. So you have a ton of opportunities to be connected with employers and jump into a full-time job after graduation, um, which we're very passionate about. So I would love to answer any questions that you all have. You can see kind of my main information um, underneath my name, but I posted that in the chat as well. Um, definitely check out social media as you're going along with your college search process. Um, but thanks so much for um, listening about Wichita State. All right, perfect. Next up, I'm going to invite all of our reps back in uh, to turn their cameras back on, and we will go over a couple just general questions. Uh, the first one I'm going to have opposed to all of our reps here is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're going to take this just in the order in which we uh, gave the presentation. So uh, if we have a rep from uh, Garden City. Yeah, so I would just say visit as many schools as you can. I know, of course, with the pandemic, you can't really visit in person sometimes, but make sure that you visit with those reps if it's virtually or in person and just make sure that you get to ask all the questions that you want. Don't be afraid to ask uncomfortable questions as well, because this is your future and you're investing in it, so. Awesome, yeah, I would definitely uh, just backpack off of that. Um, but also make sure you're choosing a university or visiting a university that um, you would feel comfortable living at for at least the next four years, because this will be your new home. So you want it to be a home away from home. I also suggest uh, going to a place that treats you like an individual instead of a number. That means they're going to invest their time in you, and especially since you're going to be making a big investment in them, you're going to want that as well. Well, I obviously agree. Visiting to me is the most important, especially, you know, all of us here, all of us panelists are at institution. So number one, put your feet on the ground, check out the campus. So much of the college that you choose really comes from a feel that you have once you pull into the town or you step foot on campus. Um, and really also, I would say, try to go when school is in session. I know a lot of times it's hard to visit, um, unless it's the weekend or during holidays, but you really get a different feel for a university when you can see the students on campus and there's a different buzz and a different energy. Um, and of course, if you can piggyback that into seeing a football game or a basketball game or anything else that sort of gives you the vibe or sort of the heartbeat of the university, I would definitely recommend that as well. Um, yeah, just to add to that, I think an important thing is actually just kind of start with yourself, um, meaning, you know, you look back at your time in high school, what you've done, what you've been involved in, what you like and didn't like in high school, what types of courses you liked and didn't like, um, just really truly thinking about that um, as you go throughout the college search process, because that's going to help you if you know kind of yourself a little bit, you still may change your mind, or you, you know, when you, um, change your major or something like that, which is fine, but at least you reflecting on yourself will give you uh, maybe a good um, blueprint to work from when you're looking at different universities and colleges across either here in Texas or um, nationwide too. Yeah, my biggest advice is just creating a list of factors that are important to you. Um, do you want to attend a small or big institution? Do you want to stay in state or go out of state? And um, really think about those factors because this is really going to help you kind of figure out um, kind of if that college is going to, you know, help you mark some stuff off your checklist. Uh, so that's my biggest advice. I know it can be very overwhelming since there's so many institutions, but definitely know that we are here to make things easier for you. And so we're always happy to answer any questions that you have. I couldn't agree more with all of my colleagues here, but I would also just add um, not to limit yourself. So you may, I've had students that thought this was gonna be you know, my, my dream school and they actually stepped foot on campus a little later in their senior year and that didn't end up to be where they felt like home, kind of like Megan said. So um, really just don't set limitations until you've made those visits. So kind of tying a little bit of it all together, um, you know, kind of know yourself like Cameron said, in order to have some idea of what you're looking for. But um, as you're taking those visits, even if you have a, the chance to visit each size kind of of university, um, kind of take that in and compare to maybe something that's farther away that you can't visit. And then also just keep in mind the city as well or the town that you're gonna be a member of because that'll be an important part too. 
Excellent. Sage advice from all of our reps. So thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone in the audience for attending. Uh, as we wrap up here, when you close this window, you'll get a very quick four question survey. And if you could provide us with a little bit of feedback, we'd greatly appreciate it. Be sure to sign up for more sessions as well. We have two more hours tonight and then tomorrow as well. So you can find those registration forms at strivescan.com slash Texas. And recordings of this, this session and all the sessions will also be there in a couple of days. So thank you again to our panelists and have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mike.